Fed Jerome Powell dropped some bombshells today. Stocks loved it. Tesla's stock was up over 2% today. This means potentially an end of the year rally is coming around the corner. There is a specific reason for this and something Fed Jerome Powell said, really multiple things Powell said. If you guys want a full rundown of that, check out the last video that really kickstarted today's rally. That could continue for a while, mainly driven by the fall in 10-year treasury yields. Tesla is, as I've said many times, probably the biggest beneficiary of yields coming down. And that's exactly what happened today. So we have a lot to get into, some charts, some historical data. November, December tend to be the first and the second most bullish months of any given year. So November, December probably going to be pretty strong thanks to yours truly fed jerome powell but we do have some catalysts coming tomorrow that i think you really need to know that will be the icing on the cake the cherry on the sunday to potentially give us that end of the year rally so we we have a jam-packed video to get into we're going to go over the technicals what i expect from tesla how i plan to trade this and all of that hit that like button subscribe to the channel and source your comments questions or concerns down below in the comment section let me know what you guys think about all of this information and let's not waste your time and let's get straight into it first things first tesla is seeing a very nice recovery off the bottom today you were actually falling you were down a decent amount today uh you actually hit the low of about a hundred and $98 per share. Tesla stock closed, closed around $206 per share. So it was quite the move. Now, I've talked about this for days now. This should be no surprise to anyone out there. Tesla normally bounces when it hits 30 on the RSI. That's why I was buying heavily when Tesla was at 195, 194. Are you crazy? Give me those free shares. That's basically like getting free money. When it comes down to Tesla, not financial advice, I think it's free money. You might not contact a financial advisor. If you are curious, this is not a recommendation to buy, sell, trade, anything. But when you hit 30 on that RSI, Tesla tends to bounce almost every time. And the bounce with Tesla is aggressive when you hit 30 on the RSI. Let's look at the most recent 30 you know, touches on the RSI and what happened to Tesla. Back here, December of 2022, Tesla broke 30 to the downside on the RSI. You hit 101, $101. You ended up bouncing to about 218. And then you hit 70, came back down. Back here in April, you hit 30 on the RSI. And that was at $151. Tesla stock proceeded over the next three months to rally to about $300 per share. And that's where Tesla got pretty overbought at that point, blew past 70 all the way to about 90 on the RSI. At one point, Tesla was the over, the most overbought stock um, on the entire NASDAQ. Now, what happened even more recently? Tesla hit 30 on the RSI. That was at about $211 per share back here in August. Tesla proceeded to rally to about 280. And now you've hit 30 again. Where does that send Tesla? I don't know. A lot of the time you do hit 30 and bounce to 70 over the next, you know, coming couple of months. Not always does that happen, but most of the time, like 90% of the time that does tend to happen. So the historical performance of Tesla over the past couple of years would suggest Tesla stock could break out big time. And it would not surprise me to see Tesla hit a new high for 2023 before the end of this year. Why is that? Wall Street is forward looking. Wall Street doesn't give a crap about what happened three months ago, what happened six months ago, what happened a year ago, what happened during the Rony Rona. It could give two craps less. The markets care about what's coming over the next three, six, nine, 12 months. The markets are not super forward looking. They're not looking out five years from now. At least not when Fed funds rates are 5%. When rates are at zero, then you do get more of that longer term duration outlook. But right now, markets are looking out really six to nine months. That's what they're saying. Even a year is kind of a stretch. But markets are looking out and saying, hey, six to nine months from now, the Fed's going to be cutting rates. Tesla will be in an optimal position because their business has been hurt 
been getting hurt because of this. Lower rates should fuel more demand for Tesla and also a lower monthly payment. Tesla might actually be able to raise prices. I don't think Wall Street has figured that out, that Tesla will actually raise prices when rates come down because it's all about that monthly payment. But Wall Street will start to price in that probability a little bit more. Kind of like FSD today. There's a little bit of it priced in. But if we were to get like good news, like Tesla applied for a, you know, robo taxi permit, call it San Francisco or, you know, wherever else. Well, Tesla stock would go up a lot on that information, probably 20 plus percent in a single day because it's kind of priced in, but it's not, you know, that priced in. It's, it's, it's not like 100 percent priced in, not even close to that. But when you actually get confirmation, when the markets start to realize that, boom, then you can get a lot of value added pretty dang quickly. So that is something I am firmly bullish on heading into 2024. And Fed Powell basically just confirmed we're not getting any more rate hikes unless the, the economic data were to just come in really, really strong or inflation were to rocket higher out of nowhere. Let's take a look at the probabilities for December's Fed meeting. They're actually falling. So the probability currently is an 80% chance on December 13th that Fed funds rates stay paused. There's a 20% chance of a hike. As of earlier today, before this latest Fed meeting, there was a 73.9% chance of a pause in December and a 25.6% chance of a hike. So the chance of a hike went down 5.6% today based on this Fed meeting. Uh, the, the odds of a rate cut are really staying kind of the same. That depends on how the data starts to come in. If the data starts to come in negatively, then we could pretty quickly start to actually price in a cut. And that's something we want to be watching for because, you know, with 10, 20, 30 year treasuries the way they are, that's obviously causing a lot of pressure on the economy. The big story of the day today that really is causing stocks to do so well, it says uh, the 10 year treasury yield is down about 11 and a half basis points. Now, double lines... Gunlock says interest rates are going to fall as a recession arrives early 2024. He says, quote, I do think rates are going to fall as we move into a recession in the first part of next year. And that's interesting because I've pointed this out after your 5% GDP report last quarter. Well, currently the GDP expectation for Q4 is around 1%. The lowest end, you know, estimate is negative. The highest end estimate is like 1.7%. So there is a chance that GDP does come in negative for Q3. And that would obviously be, as you know, two declining quarters of GDP in a row causes a technical recession. You you have to get the, the government basically confirming that. We had one of those in 2022. The government never confirmed it, but you were in a technical recession. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, if rates come down, that's going to be good for Tesla. The thing you really need to be watching for as a longer term investor heading into 2024 with a recession, with lower rates, all of that, the biggest thing that matters is how deep of a recession do we go into? I don't think there's like any, you know, uh, Balance sheet problems. It's it's hard to say that. I'm I'm trying. I'm I'm getting a mortgage right now. I'm just you know has to have to get some asbestos stuff looked at and the tiles and that could be a you know potential disaster and delay this process a lot. But I'm going. I'm getting a house right now. Pretty much already closed on it. And they make you jump through hoops like hoop after hoop after hoop after hoop. It's ridiculous. People that are getting houses or anything credit are high quality borrowers, like pristine balance sheets, no debt, you know, make a decent amount of money. Like that's what you have to have to buy a house these days. That's, that's what, you know, you have to have to finance basically anything due to the cost of living being so high. So I don't think there's really like a, 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 a debt problem as of right now on a relative basis. I think one day the debt bubble is going to burst and we're going to be in a pretty bad situation, but your, your big problem could be the banking crisis, the banking sector. If rates come down, that's going to be better. 
I just, I, I, I don't see how we get a deep recession in the near term, right? Unless you were to see people just really stop spending out of kind of nowhere, which is a possibility, but that's your biggest concern for, for, you know, if you're a Tesla stock investor is if we do go into a deep recession, now, Gunlock says, I really believe that layoffs are coming. We've seen hiring freezes, and now we're starting to see layoff announcements. They're out there for financial firms and technology firms, and I believe that's going to spread. Gunlock also sounded an alarm after the growing federal deficit, which ballooned to nearly $1.7 trillion at the end of the la latest fiscal year that ended in September. The budget shortfall adds to the staggering U.S. debt total, which stood at almost $34 trillion. Quote, one thing that the market is going to have to confront is we cannot sustain these interest rates and this deficit any longer. We can't afford this government that we're running at today's interest rate level. It's completely unsustainable. And that's the thing. The, the interest payment on government debt is over $870 billion. Guess what we're going to spend on the military in 2024? About $846 billion. So the number one thing we spend money on? Well, it's now interest on the debt. It's literally unsustainable. Gunlock is correct. Rates will be coming down in 2024. Let's hope that doesn't come with a you know deep recession. If not, Tesla easily could be four to six hundred dollars a share. If that happens during a recession, I think these prices today are not all too uh, unfair, right? If we go into some kind of moderate kind of deep recession next year, two hundred dollars per share, one eighty per share is pretty fair value for Tesla. I don't think that's too expensive. I don't think that's too low. If you avoid a recession, you get lower rates and the Cybertruck does really well, but better than expectations, you could easily see Tesla again at four to $600 uh, per share. But that's like I said, in the near term, I do think we are in for quite the rally in the markets as well as Tesla stock. Now, I don't look at this as a period to be going in super heavy in Tesla, believe that or not. I think the low twos, it's, it's a great place to buy. And I was buying in the low twos. I was buying in the 190s. Hell, I was buying Tesla when it was $50, $30 on these, you know, accounting for the splits, right? Current today's pricing. But I didn't buy enough then. And I wish I did. So I will not make that same mistake on not buying here. But if we do go into a recession in which it looks like the economy is going to slow, you cannot count on that, but it looks like it's going to slow, then you want to have dry powder on the sidelines to be able to buy that dip. I do, though, think Tesla stock's going higher here in the near term. That's almost a certainty, in my opinion. The MACD is, is starting to curl up. It's it's definitely negative. The yellow line is above is below the blue line, but it is starting to curl up. Things are starting to look a little bit better. On any bounce here, I'm targeting upside to about 245. I think if we do get a sustained rally here in the markets, that is what you could see for Tesla stock. Breaking above the 200-day moving average, that is almost a guarantee as long as nothing goes sideways, nothing goes bad with the catalyst we're going to talk about next with some of the data we're going to get into. Uh, then you're probably going to break above that 200-day moving average. That could send you higher than that, obviously, or gap up from last earnings or gap down from last earnings to fill that. You would have to hit about 242. So I think in that 240 range looks pretty attractive um, for an upside target with Tesla. That would be November, December ish. Now, as I have talked about before, I even showed this chart in the last video. One week after you enter into a technical correction, you tend to be up about one and a half percent, about 66 percent of the time, about two thirds of the time. Two weeks, three weeks, one month later, you tend to be down. Three months, six months, and one year later, you tend to be up. One year later, you tend to be up about 10.1 10 percent. This time, infamous saying is a little bit different just because you have so many different things going on. You have high inflation, you have the Fed, you have, you know, earnings, which still we have Apple tomorrow. That's going to be your big dog. Apple could drive the markets much higher, much lower from here. I'm not bullish on Apple's numbers, but I'm not bullish. I'm not bearish necessarily on the share price reaction because Tim Cook has uh, a way of words. That's for sure. But I think it's all about rates. I think it's all about yields right now. And when yields plummet the way they just did, it's probably going to continue at least for a couple of days. A, a trend a trend downwards for yields is probably going to happen 
following what Fed Jerome Powell said today. Again, basically, it's going to take a lot for the Fed to raise rates. They're trying to be very careful here because there is going to be a lot of strain coming on the economy over the next couple of months. That's what Fed Jerome Powell said. So we're pretty much not going to get any more action from the Fed. Markets can start looking forward to rate cuts. That's bullish for Tesla specifically. That's bullish for your small and your mid-cap stocks as well. Now, coming tomorrow morning, you're going to get Palantir, Shopify, Crocs, Penn National Gaming, Gaming, Signon, ConocoPhillips. Tomorrow, after hours, like I said, Apple is your big dog that will be reporting earnings. You have Block, DraftKings, Carvana, Fortinet, Starbucks, Coinbase, Cloudflare. Uh, you know, those are going to be important for their sectors, but really, Apple is 11% weighting of, of, of the triple Qs, the NASDAQ 100. Whatever Apple says or however Apple stock responds to their earnings is really going to drive, you know, what, what ultimately happens um, with the broader markets. I would imagine if Apple were to drop 10%, for an example, you're going to drop about 1.2% on the NASDAQ, not considering any other sympathy moves with any other stocks like Microsoft, Google, you know, NVIDIA, any of those other guys. So it'll be very important what Apple says tomorrow. On the front of economic data, you actually do not have much coming tomorrow. You do have Challenger job cuts for October. That comes in at 7.30 in the morning. I'm not expecting that to be huge. You do have initial jobless claims, non-farm productivity, unit labor cost, uh, factory orders a month over month, four week, eight week, and fifth, uh, no, four week, and eight-week bond auctions, 15 uh, and 30-year mortgage rates that will be coming out, and then s- later on in the in the night, you know, tomorrow night, you're gonna get some uh, composite service uh, PMI uh, data coming out for China. That can be important, but that's obviously, I mean, at that time we're going to be reacting to Apple. So it's probably not going to be that big of a deal. Now, Friday is the big day. You're going to have non-farm payrolls for October coming out. You're expecting 180,000, uh, job ads, and then your unemployment rate is expected at 3.8%. So that's going to be the next big driver of yields. If the data comes in light, then you're going to be in for some really good news as far as yields, and yields probably will continue to fall. That is going to help the markets rally. Now, the data we got today came in light as well for ISM manufacturing PMI. That came in about three points lower than expectations, and Jolt's job openings actually came in a little bit better than expectations at uh, 9.55 million, you were expecting 9.25 million. And then your ADP employment change came in 113,000 jobs. You were expecting 150,000 jobs. So came in a little bit light. If that means our labor report on Friday is going to be light as well. I mean, that's obviously going to be uh, great news for uh, yields for our markets. And that will send Tesla stock even higher. Now, something I think you guys need to see as well is the option activity for Tesla. Today, you've seen 837 orders totaling $4.68 billion with a positive order value of 38%. This is now the highest day for Tesla options that I have ever seen with Tesla. $4.68 billion is higher than what we just seen not too long ago of about $4 billion. That's crazy high, guys. That is crazy high. 38% positive order value. That's not that great. But if you look at the volume today, about it's about 50-50. About uh, 50.63% call volume and 49.37% put volume. So it's, it's, I mean, it looks like hedge funds institutions are pretty bearish. But retail is pretty dang bullish. And if you look at the S&P 500, you did break out above your 200-day moving average today as well. So that does support a continued rally to come from here. Again, it does depend on interest rates and how bond yields do perform. But breaking that 200-day moving average, which was at $421 even, you're currently at $422.48. I mean, you're above this by $1.48. That's a decent margin to break above you if you were a bear you would have wanted to see resistance here and to get rejected today not to break above this could potentially set the S&P or the SPY up to a rally of about 434 that's going to put you at about your 50 day moving average that's where you probably find a lot of resistance if you break out above that your 100 day moving average is at $438 
15 cents per share. So that would be the next level to be watching for. And then if you look at the QQQ, same thing here, guys. You're bouncing straight off of this downtrending line of support. A strong candle here, almost closing near the ultimate high of the day. Your next level is your 20-day moving average at about 360. Your 50-day moving average at 364. And then your other moving averages are right about here as well. Your 200-day moving average still down here. I think you have a pretty clear shot to some upside as well. If you just connect this downtrending line, that would put the upside maybe resistance level around about 370, the high 360s. That's the level in which I'd be watching for, uh, you know, for this bounce. But again, if, if rates do fall a lot, there's no telling what could happen for the markets. The markets could rocket higher, but I do believe it would be interest rate sensitive companies like a Tesla or like small caps that would be the biggest beneficiaries of that. So those are my thoughts on today. That's what I think you guys need to know heading into tomorrow as well as the rest of this week with Apple earnings and the economic data. We are, uh, we did see some earnings come out as well. It looks like Airbnb did pretty bad. It looks like Alf did pretty good. It's 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 a mixed bag across the board. Uh, if you guys want to come trade with us live in real time, come get access to all of the trades that I make every single day. Link down below in the description of this video. In the meantime, like the video as well as subscribe to the channel and share this video with someone that you think needs to hear this information. My name is Michael Tyler. Enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.